Welcome back, my friends. You are looking fantastic, as always. Today we're going to take a deep dive into the Altus scale. But first, roll the intro. So, this is my fifth video in the video series regarding Steel Tongue Drum on my YouTube channel, Hear My Melody. As you know, the first four videos have been deep dives into the Steel Tongue Drum and its scales. We are going to keep on this theme just a little longer, because today we are going to take a deep dive into the Altus scale. Later in this video series I will keep on speaking a lot about different aspects of the Steel Tongue Drum. For example, I will be speaking of models, uh, designs, recording techniques, microphones, playing styles and also other scales. I am a multi-instrumentalist, so if you want to check out other cool instruments, you could uh, head over to my channel to see the bagpipe or the hammered dulcimer, for just naming a few. I will be dividing this deep dive, as I have done with the previous four, into five parts. We will of course begin with a short presentation of the scale. Then we will move on to the deep dive and all of its small intricacies, and move on to the basic chords that you can play with this particular scale. Then I will play a specific rhythm style so you can compare this specific scale with my other drum videos, and also end on a high note where I will be giving my own personal thoughts regarding this scale. So let's move on to the first part of this video. So, I will be showcasing this alto scale in C major on my smallest drum, namely a Gouda Frisbee. This is a great drum that is easy to bring with you wherever you go. But I will be speaking a lot more of my different Gouda models in videos later on. For now, we will just use this drum to showcase the alto scale. Mind you that I don't have a middle note on this drum, but we can still get a feeling for the scale. In this alto scale in C major, we have the following notes. The C, the D, E, G, A, B, C, and D. I will now let you listen to the scale and also showcase how you play it up and down the drum. Just sit back and listen. If we look at this, as we have done in the previous videos, we check out the intervals of the scale, the distance between each note, we have from C to D, a major second, we have another major second from D to E, continuing on with an E to a G a minor third, then a major second again from G to A, from A to B we have a major second, then from B to C a minor second and finally C to D a major second. As you can see, I don't have as many notes as I have on the other drums. Even my Gouda double, that don't have a middle note on the bottom side, still has nine notes. But this, on a Gouda Frisbee, it's so small, so we only have the space for eight notes. As usual, we are looking at the each side separately to prove the theory that melodic drums almost always are made so that the sides work very well on their own. Let's check out the right side of the drum. 
Here we have a C, an E, an A and a C. If we check that out in music theory, we say a major third, a perfect fourth and a minor third. They sound like this on the drum. And like this on the piano. On the left side we have a D, a G, a B and a D. A perfect fourth, a major third and a minor third. The same intervals as the other side but not in the same order. If we listen to them on the drum they sound like this. And on the piano like this. We should also note that it is interesting that both sides start and end on the same note. The right side from C to C and the left side from D to D. What basic chords can we make in this scale? We have to start with the most obvious, the C. There we have the primary note of C, then we add a E and a G. We can also flip them around and play them in different order. We still have the C chord. They sound like this on the drum. If we want to color the C, we can add the major 7. The major 7 means that we add the big 7 in the scale of C major to the chord. If we look at the piano, we have the C and one half step behind the C we find the B. This is the major 7 of the chord. It sounds like this. We can then move on to the E minor. We need the notes of E, G and B. They sound like this. If we want to color the chord, we can add the D, we then get the E minor 7. This is not a major 7, mind you, it is a small 7 but we only call it 7. This is always placed two steps behind the primary note. Look at this, E and two steps back we have the D. It sounds like this. We can also play the G. We have the G, B and D. We move on to the A minor, the A, the C and the E. And finally we can also color the A minor. Let's add the small 7, A minor 7. If we look at the piano, which note would you add to get the A minor 7? Yes. That's right, the G. Two half steps behind the primary note of A. So, onward to my own final thoughts regarding this scale. 
It is a major scale, but somehow I also find it somewhat melancholic. I feel the happiness and the harmony of the scale, but there is something sad also. I would really like to try to play this scale on a bigger drum. If you go to the Sam Percussion homepage, you can find this drum if you search for the Toner Scale. It is only called the Alter Scale when it's mentioned together with the Frisbee model. If you are looking at the, for example, Gouda 2.0, you can find it as the Toner Scale. Please feel free to check out my deep dive videos in the Steel Tongue Drum series on YouTube if you are interested in checking out other scales. It is important that you find the scale that is best suited for you. If that gave you a lot of value, you can subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future videos in this series. And also find me on Instagram and Facebook. I post a lot of cool things there too. If you have any questions regarding the steel tongue drum, this particular scale, or uh, anything other you want to know about me, uh, you can leave a comment down below and I will be getting back to you shortly. That was all for this time. I bid you farewell and also... Hey, do.